and welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, I thought it'd be fun to do a video that is a bit different from the things Alicia and I typically do here on our channel. Whenever we're together, we regularly do our favorites videos, our monthly or recent favorites, which are products that we love, products that we've been using, that we really enjoy using, and things like that. But we've never done a products I regret buying video. And I know it's so easy to get caught up in ranting and raving about products that we love that we forget to mention the products that we bought that we didn't like. Products that we've used and either didn't like or products that we, that we bought and found better alternatives or just products that we wish that we just didn't buy. And so I'll be doing that video today. I will make a note to you guys to please make sure that you guys watch the entire video um, because you all will see that there are different reasons as to why I regret these different products. Now, most of the products that I will mention are higher end products, the products that are more pricey, but watch the entire video to see why I didn't necessarily like that product or why I regret buying it. You, you, you guys will see, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first product I'll start off with is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit in the shade Deep. Now, I actually mentioned this in a favorites video from, I think like last summer or like early last fall. It was quite a while ago. And it was whenever I first purchased this product and I really, really liked it whenever I first purchased it. However, as of today, or actually as of like a month, as of like a few months after I bought the product, I regretted buying it. Now, this product here runs for about 40 bucks. The reason why I bought it is because it does have a wide variety of contour shades. Now, as you can see, it's only one hiding shade, which is this shade here. But there are four different um, contouring shades in a color correcting shade. And that's why I bought it. And I really did like it when I first purchased it. And of course, you know, we watch YouTube videos and everyone's ranting and raving about this product. Because this one was like a highly 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 recommended product everyone loved it everyone was saying you have to buy it and everyone was just in love with this product and when i first bought it i did like it but about a few months later i don't know if my skin changed and my skin got drier or if the product just like dried up a little bit but y'all this product for me for me for me I will say for me, this product is really hard to blend out, okay? Whenever I try to use this contour kit, it's really, really hard to blend out. And not only that, a lot of times, these contour shades here on my skin tone, they just, they end up looking muddy. Like, I, I don't know what it is, but whenever I apply them, not only is it hard to blend out, but it's all, it also turns like a really muddy grayish color. And I don't like that. Like, I don't know the last time I've used this, which is 40 bucks on the drain, but I stopped using it because it's hard to blend out. It's muddy. And honestly, I just don't think that a beauty enthusiast, someone who just does makeup on themselves and just, you know, loves to, you know, play in makeup, I don't think a cream contour kit is necessary because you know, whenever you're getting a kit, you're getting it for the different variety of shades. And if you're just contouring on yourself, then you don't need four different contour shades because, you know, you just, you won't use them. Um, so I definitely regret buying this and I just don't think it's necessary for, for me. So the next product that I regret buying is actually a product that I had, I think I've used it before in a tutorial. And this one I regret it, not because I don't like it, but because I found something better for the reason why I bought it, if that makes sense. So the next product is the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. Now, I will know, like I said, that I do actually really like this foundation. I do. I really like it for a very lightweight foundation. The only thing about this foundation is that it loves lines, wrinkles, like any kind of crevice or any kind of like line or pour or anything, this settles in everything. So whenever I apply it, I almost always have to mix it with a thicker foundation just to kind of give me a little bit more coverage and to kind of prevent this from settling in my fine lines and lap lines and pores and things like that. But overall, I think it's a pretty good foundation. The reason why I regret buying it is because I bought this foundation, um, 
a few months ago, I think last fall, late last fall, and I bought it because I was looking for a lightweight foundation for the winter time. Now, during the winter, my skin gets a little drier, it's not as oily, and I just need something that's more lightweight, but still gives nice coverage. And I originally wanted to buy the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. That was my first go-to. However, that was at the time or that was during the time when Ulta Sephora did not have the darker shades of the Too Faced Born This Way in store. And I remember Alicia and I vowed to not buy the Too Faced foundation until they had it in store because I didn't want to order them online and guess the wrong shade and have to return it and just do all this. So even though I really wanted the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, I didn't get it because it didn't have my shade. So I went ahead and settled for this one. And like I said, it is pretty good, but I should just wait it for the Too Faced, y'all. I should just wait it for it. And the reason why is because this foundation, oh my gosh, it is like the greatest lightweight, medium to full coverage foundation ever. For Especially for oily skin, this foundation, y'all, is Phenomenal, it's perfect. This foundation, like I said, it's lightweight, but it gives beautiful coverage. It's buildable, first of all. So like one coat of it is probably about medium coverage. If you do, you know, two or three, then of course you get really full coverage. But this foundation blends in so well. It literally looks like skin, y'all. It looks like skin. It's perfect and it genuinely blurs away the pores it doesn't really settle into fine lines and things like that like this one here applies to the skin so well as opposed to this one because this one you have to do more to make it work if that makes sense yeah this one's just trickier to work with so i regret buying the nars foundation just because the Too faced more this way foundation is like 10 times better in my opinion so the next product is the kevin aquan sensual skin enhancer now, the reason why I regret this one is because it is a hit or miss. Some days I apply it, y'all, and it looks the bomb. Like, it gives great coverage. It settles into my skin like nicely. It, it, it gives a very natural finish. And, of course, the highlight is popping, y'all. Some days, it's on 10. Other days, it's on, like, zero. Some days when I apply it, it looks cakey. It looks patchy. It just, it is just, it's just not doing right at all. And that's one thing I don't like about this concealer. Second thing is that it is extremely expensive. And again, this is another product that I bought because of YouTube that happened to all of us. And I will say that it is a good concealer. It gives really good coverage. I will say that it is very thick. It's a thicker consistency and it gives great coverage. The only thing is, like I said, it's just some days it works out for me, y'all for me. Some days it works out well and some days it just doesn't work out at all. To me, I don't think it's worth the price. <laughs> this little jar was worth, I think I spent like 52 bucks on it, 52 or 54. It was over 50, $50 and that's including checks. Let me tell you, you do not have to buy this at all. Like I said, it's good, but I definitely regret spending this 50 something bucks because there are definitely way better alternatives out there. So the next product that I regret buying is actually one of my go-to setting powders for my foundation, but there's a reason why I regret buying it and I'll tell you guys why. So the product is the MAC Studio Fix Powder. I've been using the MAC Studio Fix Powder for years in the shade NC45 to set my whole face and I have always loved it. If you guys know, it is a full coverage, this kind of dirty and I pit pan on it, but it is a full coverage setting powder. Um, it stays matte all day, keeps your oil in place. It really does a really good job of keeping your face matte and giving really, really good coverage. But the reason why I regret buying this product is because I have found a new holy grail setting powder that I have been loving for the past like two months and I will probably not be going back to the Studio Fix powder to see my face because this powder here is like half the price. And it is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Setting Powder. It just gives such nice coverage. It's the perfect shade for me, and I'm the shade Classic Tan. It's the perfect shade for me. It gives a beautiful finish, y'all. It doesn't look cakey, doesn't look powdery, it doesn't look dry. It literally looks perfect. And 
When I put this product here, it keeps my face matte all day. This product here really does what it says. I definitely check out the L'Oreal, the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Powder um, as a substitute for the MAC Studio Fix Powder because they do the same thing. They're powders, full coverage, mattifying, but this one is half the price of the Studio Fix Powder. So I definitely give this one a try. Okay, I have two more products left. The next product that I regret buying um, is also similar situation to the Studio Fix Powder, and that is the MAC Prep and Prime um, Hotter Pen in Peach Luster. Now, I've been using this hiding pen for a long time, it feels like. I thought I've been using it for forever. And I really, really, I will say that I really, really like the Peach Luster pen until I found the LA Girl Pro Concealer, the orange concealer. I don't wanna say so much about it because this one is like three bucks. This is probably like 20 bucks-ish. They do the same thing. Um, the Peach Luster, I will say, the MAC Peach Luster Hiding Pen is, it's more of a coral um, shade. So whenever you apply it to color correct, it's a lighter shade compared to this, this, this pure orange color here. The LA Girl Pro Concealer, like I said, it's bomb, it's three bucks. Um, and it does a really good job of color correcting. The only problem is, is that a little bit goes a long way. And once you get it down and you figure out how to use it, you guys will always go to this over the Peach Luster. So the next product that I regret buying is kind of a general product. Um, and I'll explain to you guys why, but I have been regretting buying eyeshadow palettes lately. And that is just general eyeshadow palettes that are pre-made um like for example these are the Lorac pro palettes i will say that i love y'all don't get me wrong i love these palettes they're great quality and they give you a wide variety of looks to do but not just these in general just general eyeshadow palettes that i have purchased i have recently regretted buying them because i have learned that i tend well you guys know i tend to kind of gravitate more towards neutrals you know golds um champagne colors gold gold browns reds oranges things that are more neutral and I have realized that most of the palettes that I've actually purchased I do not use which is crazy I have spent a lot of money on palettes in the past that I have not I've used them maybe once or twice put them away for months at a time bring them out you know months later one time and then put them I don't really use actual palettes like that anymore and the reason why is because whenever you buy an eyeshadow palette that's already made, a lot of times the colors that are in the palette, you don't use all of them. I know I don't. Most of the colors that are in there, honestly, especially for brown girls, and you guys know if you're brown skin, you definitely know how a lot of times in palettes, a lot of colors don't look right on our skin tone. They either just don't show up properly, They the color payoff isn't the same, you just, you just don't get what you want out of the palette, out of the full palette. So what I have started doing is just making my own. I have literally, I don't know the last time I've actually bought an actual palette because what I've been doing is just buying individual shades that I like and that I'm, that I'm drawn to and building my own palettes. So a prime example of that is this Z palette that I have here. It's kind of dirty, but it's made up of mainly Makeup Geek eyeshadows and matte shadows down here. Um, the first two, first top two rows are Makeup Geek and the bottom row is MAC. As you can see, these are definitely more my tempo. Um, just the shade range and the way that they look and the way they, they come off. They're definitely more of the shades that I like. Cause you can do like this one palette here, you guys. I could do so many looks with just this one neutral palette here. That is ridiculous. So the individual shadows are actually really, really affordable. And it just makes finding eyeshadows that I love so much more easier. And I can just pick up this palette and go. Another example of a palette that I've made is actually, I actually bought this MAC Double or Duo, uh, what is it called? This MAC uh, Duo um, palette here from the Mac store online. I believe it was 12 bucks all together, $12, first of all. So I just took this palette and filled it, I actually filled it with Morphe eyeshadows. And as you guys can see, this palette here is also more of my tempo. It's definitely more neutrals. I have definitely learned to start doing this as opposed to buying pre-made palettes just because, like I said, a lot of these pre-made palettes that are out there, I don't use all the colors. So I've learned to just go ahead and make my own palettes and buy 
eyeshadows that appeal to me and that cater more towards my taste and that just makes my life a whole lot easier. So that is it for my Pond I Regret buying video, you guys. I, I named quite a few, not too many, but just some higher end products that, um, you know, I didn't really like and that I regret buying. And sometimes you can get caught up in buying things and get caught up in the hype of YouTube and, you know, our favorite beauty guru suggests this, so I have to go buy it, or so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so is writing about this, and I have to go buy it, but a lot of times, you find out that it does not work for you. And if you have to remember that not everything works for everybody. And I've been learning that, y'all. Thank you all so much for subscribing to our channel and watching our videos. Alicia and I just hit 17K here on our channel, which is crazy. We're so thankful and so appreciative and we love each and every one of you and appreciate all of your support and all of your views and all of your comments and just all the love that you guys show us. So thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Bye you guys.